Hey guys, Pogo here, and welcome to the next episode of Java 101. In this episode, I'm going to be showing you uh, some of the awesome new features in Java 8, namely lambdas, streams, and method references. Uh, I know that the last video with the array lists was really boring and that most if not all of you already know it from a different video that I've made but I needed to make it in order to make sure that everyone who's watching this knows because this is going to be using array lists and we need to make sure that we know how to do it. Uh, so first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and declare an array list then I'm going to do some stuff with the array list and <clears throat> then I'm going to show you uh, three amazing new features in Java that allow you to condense it all to be really, really tiny and really, really efficient. So let's go ahead and first declare uh, an array list of type string, and we'll call this uh, strs for strings, and we'll set it equal to a new array list of type string. And then inside, as I described in the array lists video, we can use arrays dot as list, the utility method where we pass it a bunch of arguments and then it'll put it in a list and then this array list will contain all of the elements in here. So if I say uh, this is a test of Java 8, we'll just say. Now, uh, so this will basically be an array list of string that contains this is a test of Java 8. Now let's go ahead and do some stuff with it. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to filter out some of the uh, items from the array list. So first we need to define another array list of type string which we're going to call remove and we're going to set it equal to an empty array list. Then we're going to use an enhanced for loop to uh, loop through so for string str in strs and we'll just say if uh, not str dot contains i and not str dot contains a remove dot add str so if the string does not contain the letter i and it does not contain the letter a we're gonna put it in the list of things to be removed which means that um the word test should be removed the word of should be removed and eight uh, so then now we need to actually go ahead and say strs dot remove all and remove the reason why you can't just call um, strs dot remove str is because you would get what's called a concurrent modification exception. Uh, I will go into this in the future because it's a very important uh, thing to know with concurrency. But basically, if I'm looping through um, this, you know, array list and I change something while I'm looping through it, uh, you can't do that. At least in Java, with there are certain um, data structures. Uh, like I think a concurrent hash map which will allow you to do that but with the array list you cannot so we're making a list of everything that to remove and then after we look through everything then we go ahead and call remove all with the list of things that we need so now uh, strs will only contain uh, things that contain the letter i and the letter a or the letter a um, so the next thing that we want to do is let's go ahead and change this so that instead of storing the strings we actually go ahead and store the uh, length of each string. So we're going to go ahead and declare an array list of type integer using the wrapper class, which we're going to call lengths, and we're going to make this equal to a new array list of type integer. Then we're going to say for string str in strs length dot add str dot length. So now this array list of type integer called length will contain the length of all of the strings. So this it would contain four, is would contain two, and a would contain one, and so on and so forth. Finally, let's go through each value and print it out. So for, um, well not strings anymore, for int um, length in length, uh, system, sorry, system dot out dot print ln length. So now let's go ahead and actually run this. And it'll print out 4, 2, 1, 4. So 4, 2, 1, and then test is also, let's see. So uh, it would print out this is A, and then Java was also okay. So test of an 8 are all invalid, so they don't end up making it in. Uh, now we're going to actually take 
all of this code right here, and we can actually condense this into one line of code. And I don't just mean removing all the spaces and making one insanely long line of code that's impossible to read. I mean taking this and making it into one beautifully crafted line of code. Let me go ahead and comment this out because this does, you know, remove stuff from the array list and we don't want to have it remove stuff before we go ahead and use it. And now we're going to go ahead under here and use the first of our three concepts, which is streaming. STRs, I'm going to go ahead and put this on a new line, and you'll see why soon, uh, and we're going to go ahead and call stream. What this does is it returns an instance of the stream class. If you take a look, it returns an instance of stream uh, for this given collection. Now, a stream basically introduces elements of functional programming into Java. Uh, streams basically just contain a bunch of data, and the data is kind of sitting in the stream, and you can call different actions on it in order to manipulate the data inside of the stream. Uh, one thing that I forgot to mention is that you need to have Java 8. These were introduced in Java 8, so if you try to call the stream method and you have Java 7 or 6 or earlier as your system library, then you'll get an error because it doesn't exist before for Java 8. Make sure that you have Java 8. Uh, now that we have this instance of stream, we'll go ahead and say dot, and you'll see that there are a ton of methods, and they all take these weird um, arguments with uh, generics, like predicate, collector, supplier, um, you know, but we're going to actually go ahead and take a look at three of them. We're going to write the, equ the equivalent of this code in using streams. One important thing to note about streams is that it uses what is called the builder pattern. So whenever I call a method in here, see how all of them return stream? When I call a method, it'll return the same stream with the elements modified as I told it to. Which means that normally you would have to say stream, stream is equal to strs.stream, and then call each method on a separate line. But with the builder pattern, you can actually call all of the methods in one continuous line because it keeps returning the same stream. First thing that we did was we did what uh, streaming would call filtering. We removed all strings that did not contain i and a. If we go ahead and take a look, you'll notice that there is filter. And this takes in a predicate that handles strings. Uh, now, as far as the predicate, predicate is actually what's called a functional interface, which is just an interface that defines one method. Uh, not terribly important right now, but we can use the second of our three concepts, which is called lambdas, in order to take care of this. First, let's go ahead and write this using a predicate. So we're going to go ahead and instantiate a predicate of type stream, and then make sure to import java.util.function.predicate then you need to uh, identify this public boolean test that will then take in a string and it returns whether or not it should be contained. So we're going to say return str dot or sorry it's called t. t dot contains i or t dot contains not get, t dot contains a. So if it contains one or both of these, then it will return true. Now this is great and all, but it's a lot of what's called boilerplate code, just like unnecessary code. You know, this is a couple lines in itself to define this anonymous inner class, but what we can do with um, lambdas, which applies anywhere, but is great to be applied with streams, watch this. T. T dot contains I, not concat, contains I, or T dot contains A. This is called a lambda, and the way that uh, lambdas work are they take over um, uh, functional interfaces. So, like how we just define that predicate uh, as an anonymous inner class, which just means a class where we didn't actually give it a name, we just instantiated it within uh, you know a method. Uh, but what this does is it will actually say this. What this basically means is. Um, it will take in all of the values in the stream for each one. This is kind of like a for each loop. We're going to name each of them t, and then since it's a boolean, if t contains i or t contains a, it'll return true, and the filter will know to uh, leave it in, I believe. I believe that's how it works. Um, so that is what a lambda does. Now, when you actually run this code and it compiles, it will compile uh, into anonymous inner classes, or not technically anonymous inner classes, but this lambda won't show up. It will 
convert it into a class the same way that it does with anonymous inner classes. But um, lambdas are just an easy way uh, of removing some of that boilerplate code that you really don't need to have. Now the next thing that we did is what streams would call mapping. When you map something, you basically uh, take in a value and then map it to another value, or you give back a different value. If you go ahead and take a look at map, you'll see that this one takes a function. The, what a function does, you can think of it sort of like a method in Java, it takes in one parameter and then it returns a type. Now in this case, we're going to go ahead and say t again, since this is a um, the string, and then we're going to say uh, return t dot, or sorry, we're going to say t dot length. What this does, let's see what the error is. Okay, what this does is um, it will map all of these strings into uh, their lengths. So if you take a look, this one will return a stream of integers because what we've done, sort of like how we define the array list of integers up there, what we're doing here is we're saying for each string, which we're going to call t, the value of it, we're going to map it to the value of the length. So this will return a new stream that contains integers and it will uh, return the uh, the lengths of all of these strings. So that's basically what we did right here, where we made a new array list and then we added the lengths of each. Here, we're mapping it to be a new stream that contains all of the lengths. Now finally, we're going to do for each, for each loop. Now you'll notice that this returns uh, type void because it's a terminal operation. This is the last thing that you would do uh, with a stream and then you're done with it. So uh, once you call this for each, you're not going to be calling anything else on this particular stream, you're uh, done with it. Now, this takes in a consumer. Let's say we want to print everything out. We could do t and then say system.out.println t so that it will print out uh, t. But there is a simpler way to do this, and this is the third of our three concepts. It's called a method reference. What we can do here is system.out colon colon print ln. Now you may be surprised that that works without any errors, but this is called a method reference, and if lambdas didn't make it simple enough for you, here are method references. What this does, it's basically the equivalent of what we just said, for each uh, string, print it out. The way that this works is for each takes a consumer for an integer. Now system.out.println does have a method for um, an integer. So it's basically the same as saying t, system.out.println t, except in this case it's calling it by itself. It knows that there's a correct method. Now, if I were to try to reference, um, you know, something that didn't exist, that didn't work, like math and max, that obviously wouldn't work because um, it needs to be a method that takes in an integer. So, um, math.max wouldn't work because it takes in, I believe, two doubles. Uh, but in this case, since system.out.println, uh, or the println method, does take in an integer, it does work. Let's go ahead and run this. And as you can see, we get the exact same out output, 4214. No trickery, this code is completely commented out. Uh, so using streams, lambdas, and method references, we took all of this code and simplified it to what could easily be one line that would probably be around the same length as this ArrayList declaration. Uh, this is one of my favorite features in Java ever, other than um, generics, which is great, and I will be getting to that very soon. Uh, but it's just so cool how you can easily take, um, you know, uh, some data and then work with it without having all of this boilerplate code that just takes up space and is not really necessary. Um, so that's all for this video. I know that it was pretty confusing. This is a bit more high level than I would usually do. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Uh, if you did not really understand this or you got confused, it's all right. It's not terribly important. It's just a cool feature of Java 8, so you might want to come back to it a little bit later. As always, subscribe if you want to see more comment with what you want to learn. If you like this video, click the like button, and I will see you guys soon uh, with some more Java videos. Bye, guys.